The House should note that even under the proposed legislation, landlords are still allowed to impose such rental computation structures, provided there is mutual agreement between landlord and tenants. We call on the government to consider asserting its influence and encourage the Fair Tenancy Industry Committee to outlaw such rental computation structures altogether in the next iteration of the Code of Conduct. The bill gives teeth and enforcement power to the, conduct, to the Code of Conduct by enshrining it in law and obliging all retail landlords in Singapore to come on board. Singapore does not need an economy with high property prices and high rents, but a dearth of innovation and creativity. Addressing the power imbalance between retail landlords and tenants is only a small step in that direction. Much needs to be done. Mr. Speaker, the Progress Singapore Party supports the bill. Thank you. The Honourable NCMP, Mr. Leong, had advocated some form of low rent control. And I've been in legal practice long enough to, real, uh, to, to remember the spectre of the Rent Control Act. In those days, uh, because of the Rent Control Act, there was no real investment by the landlords on their premises, leading to dilapidated buildings. And in the end, Singapore suffers because small Singapore would require a high utility of our land. So what is fair in the circumstances would have to be determined by market, and now we have this framework in terms of a committee, and we need to take a consensual approach to deal with all these issues. Mr. Leong Mama, you have a clarification for Mr. Murali. Thank you, sir. Perhaps uh, Member Murali is too happy with this bill. If I hear correctly, he mentioned that I mentioned I recommended rent control in my speech. Is that what you mean? I didn't say that. Yeah. Mr. Murali, Pillay. I thank the Honourable NCMP, Mr. Leong, for seeking a clarification for me. I did not assert that the Honourable Member, Mr. Leong, sought rent control. Uh, what I said in my speech was that he sought low rents on behalf of SMEs. And as a result of that, it triggered memories of the Rent Control Act. And I was in law, legal practice long enough to remember the Rent Control Act, which was subsequently uh, abolished. And I recall that where buildings where Rent Control Act applies, they become dilapidated because landlords have no incentive to invest in these buildings and making it tenable. And in the end, Singaporeans suffer because there's no utility that arises from the use of land. I hope that clarifies. Thank you. Mr. Leong, another clarification? Thank you, sir. Um, can I um, um, ask the uh, uh, member again? Um, what you have said uh, is actually a very dangerous uh, um, inference, you know, into what I said. And it is, I think I would uh, uh, ask you to retract what you have said, because I've just said that I have actually agreed with this bill, and, uh, and the direction that the uh, government has taken in this bill is, uh, I, I totally agree, and it's something that is quite rare, actually, that I agree with the direction of the government. But for this bill, I also agree, I'm also very happy with you, you know. But I didn't say that I'm, I'm asking for lower rents. I'm just saying that, in general, um, we should not encourage too much property speculation you know, and we should not encourage a rent-seeking uh, uh, economy or society. So you should not bring what I said in my speech to that conclusion. It is very unfair uh, for the inference that you have made. Can you clarify that? Mr. Morali, Pillay. Mr. Speaker, sir, it's not my intention to be confrontational with the, with the honourable member. The point I made, uh, which, I, which doesn't really need um, me to repeat, is that 
really, at the end of the day, we need to have a collaborative effort as between the tenant and the landlords in the context of the committee to come up with win-win situations. So in the context of that, it's always a give and take. And uh, to advocate for specific issues for one party may be good in courts of law, but within the framework that is being proposed in this bill, that is anathema because the whole idea here is to have a collaborative, consensual approach, and be it in relation to rent or uh, even in relation to sharing of data. Oh, thank you. Mr. Leong. Speaker, sir, I think that explanation is still not enough. You must be very clear that I didn't say I'm advocating rent control. Because what you are trying to say is actually, sorry, is actually quite similar to what the government has always been saying with regards to what I recommend in this house. Okay, when I talk about we should not encourage too much property speculation, we should uh, uh, impose, uh, we should try to, uh, uh, with this bill, we can have uh, more control over the, the big uh, 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 property landlord. You say I'm advocating, uh, you say what I'm saying is going to lead to rent control. That's very dangerous. Just like whenever I said about protecting the jobs of Singaporean, the government point accused... Point of order, Your Honour. Uh, uh, your point of order, Mr. Speaker. Yes. I, I had just now already in my first clarification stated that I did not say that Mr. the Honourable Member, Mr. Leong, advocated the rent control. I already clarified that. And against that clarification, why is the Honourable Member still maintaining that I advocated rent control? Sir, Ms. What, what I'm trying to clarify, and I, I insist that the Member clarify that, from what I say, I don't like the inference that he has made that I'm trying to recommend pushing down the rent and towards the direction of uh, rent control, and as a result, it will affect the desire, uh, the motivation of the land uh, lots in Singapore to make further investment in property and all that. I think this is too much of an inference. And I'm trying to quote that what I say, for example, in jobs, the government trying to label me as xenophobic. When I talk about lower housing prices, government say I'm trying to rate the reserves. This is the same pattern of what the members, member Murari is trying to do here, in my opinion. Mr. Murari, you want to respond to that again? Well, sir, I mean, without getting into the emotion of things, let me just assure my, my uh, honourable friend, Mr. Leong, that I wasn't making any, any specific insinuation about rent control to him, I was just picking up a point that he made in the course of his speech, that, where he advocated that in light of rent-seeking behaviours of landlords, there should be efforts to make sure that uh, tenants get low rents. I was dealing with that point. And in that context, I spoke about the mechanism in this bill, which advocates a consensual approach the committee itself has representatives from the landlords, tenants, and also other neutral parties. So I, with great respect, I fail to see how uh, I'm accused of taking his case, or rather his speech, out of tension. But in any event, um, the record would, would prove what I said. And therefore, apart from this comments, I don't wish to take this anything further. I think the records in will be of what both Mr. Murali and Mr. Leong have said will be recorded clearly in Hansard. Uh, so I would like to propose that we move on from here because both sides, both Mr. Leong and Mr. Murali have clarified. Okay, Mr. Leong, I will allow one last clarification. Sir, thank you for your indulgence. I never, I want to clarify here, I never in my speech 
mention I'm asking for lower rent. M Mr. Leong, I think that point has been clear, right? It's all, you all be recorded, yeah, what so, you said and so what Mr. Morali said. Yeah, sir, uh, Speaker, sir. So can I confirm that if afterwards we've confirmed that I didn't say that I'm asking for lower rent, I'm just talking as a general approach, Mr. Uh, Member Morari will apologise to me and correct his statement? Uh, Member Murare, can I ask whether you will commit to that? Mr. Leong, you can sit down. Mr. Murari, please. Sir, I'm not making any commitment, sir. Uh, I think, um, of course, Mr. Leong is entitled to his views, and I hope that he respects um, that I'm entitled to my views as well. I've already offered that, uh, you know, th whatever we said is recorded in Hansard, and we stand by what we say. And I think, you know, our, whatever that we do, uh, our conduct and all these things would have to be something that uh, would flow from there. So I'm not going to make any commitment. As I've said, both Mr. Morali Pillay have clarified, as well as Mr. Leong, you have also clarified what you have said. The Honourable NCMP, Mr. Leong, had advocated some form of low rent control. And I've been in legal practice long enough to, real, uh, to, to remember the spectre of the Rent Control Act. In those days, uh, because of the Rent Control Act, there was no real investment by the landlords on their premises, leading to dilapidated buildings. And in the end, Singapore suffers because small Singapore would require a high utility of our 